What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Well, this morning I got up and I saw Nick Tragilli's video. Now, I like Nick. I follow him. I don't, I don't say like we're best friends or anything, but I consider him a friend and I think he's a good dude. I like him and I don't think that people understand most of the time that the things he says is not to piss them off or he's not trying to be rude. He's just speaking his mind, which I can respect. And I think a lot of people, same thing with Sean Ray. A lot of people don't like Sean Ray. I love Sean Ray. I never have a problem with him. I don't have a problem with the shit he says. They're just speaking their mind. In this day in an age, people that speak their mind are individuals get frowned upon. If you don't go with the, the, the general consensus of what they want and what they like, you're fucking outcast. Like, I've had that shit happen pretty much for the last fucking 20 years of my life. You know, if you're not on board with everybody else, following the trends and doing what they do, you're fucking an outcast and you suck. Like, pretty much, right? So the video that Nick made was about Tony Huge, and I didn't see Tony's video. I didn't actually didn't search for it either, but I got the gist of the whole thing from Nick, what Nick was saying. And he was pretty upset about the video, and I believe it was Generation Iron that he was talking about that made the video. That basically, Tony is quoted saying that um, steroids remove all the hard work from bodybuilding, right? From your gains, from bodybuilding, whatever the case may be, from muscle building, right? And Nick was pretty pissed off, and I, I get it. I get it 100%, and I do 110% agree with Nick. Now, I know Tony. I know actually Tony know Tony a little better than I know Nick. And um, I agree with Nick here 100%. Um, now, number one, you know, Tony, of course, trains, you know, he trains hard. I've seen him training in the gym and stuff like that. So he himself trains hard and takes all those drugs. And Tony takes a lot of drugs. So realistically, and I know his body changes fast. Like he did things like water wise and electrolyte wise for a show and it changed his body but that's pulling water and stuff and he even admitted that he wasn't dieted down enough and had he dieted down enough he wouldn't have had to do this fucking voodoo magic at the end where he actually won the show but the bottom line is tony's still busting his ass right he's still out there training hard and he's being consistent so you have consistency and hard work on top of all the crazy amounts of drugs that tony does as well as the things that you know people would never even get their hands on like he's doing more things and more of those things and he's still having to train hard restrict diet be consistent he's still having to do all the things that he says gets taken out of bodybuilding now it is my personal opinion and tony this is nothing against you that if tony trained harder and dieted harder because he actually has a lot of slip-ups he says flat out he has a hard time dieting and stuff like that if he dieted harder and trained harder he would look even fucking better he would be even bigger and he'd be even more shredded if he did more hard work with all the drugs that he's taking. Tony relies a lot on the drugs and he still trains hard, but he could be training harder. He's not training like those guys that are fucking hungry after that pro card. He's not training at all like that. He's not eating at all like that. Just his travel schedule in general wouldn't allow him to be like one of those guys that hunkers down for 18 weeks and pushes themselves to the fucking max or hunkers down for two or three years trying to get that pro card. And if you stood Tony next to those guys, I mean, Tony's won a couple local shows, but if you put Tony on the national level, he's going to get his doors blown off as soon as he walks on stage. It's a whole different ball game. Now, I do agree with Nick, but I think Nick's looking at this, and I understand where Nick's coming from, but I'm looking at it from a different perspective, of course, as usual. Yes, it's going to give the kids the wrong message. And yes, the people nowadays in general, because they don't train hard and they don't fucking diet and they don't want to eat a lot of food and they fucking, I get it. They look like shit nowadays compared to the 90s and even the 80s. The 80s fucking bodybuilders looked even better than the fuckers do nowadays. That's just all there is to it. There were people in the gym that weren't even bodybuilders that look better than some of the guys on stage now. I mean, that's just, it's just a fucking fact. That's all there is to it. The social media has watered down the whole aspect of training and dieting hard. They, everybody just thinks it's all about calories. You don't have to diet hard. You can eat Pop-Tarts. You can do all this shit. Meanwhile, all the champions that are actually winning, the ones that not the ones that are winning these shows where nobody shows up at and they have the pictures for Instagram. I'm talking about big shows where the genetic elite shows up and all the fucking bodybuilders that are fucking dieting hard and training hard, those guys are fucking hunkering down and fucking doing the work. They're doing the, the deal, the business of bodybuilding and fucking crushing it. So now what's going to happen is these individuals that are going to rely on the drugs and not the training and the diet, they're going to look like shit. And the more and more people that get involved, the more and more shit they look like, the more and more that we'll have these, these ranks of the gyms as well as the stages flooded with people that look like shit. And what's going to happen is someone out there is going to be trained by an old school bodybuilder. Okay, so it's going to be the new school. Everybody's taking lots of drugs. They're not dieting hard. They're not training hard. Someone out there is going to get trained by an old school bodybuilder. Let's just for an example, let's say someone hires Dorian Yates to train them. And they're going to walk into a show, their first show, and they're going to destroy everybody just like Dorian did, right? And people are going to go, who the fuck's this guy? And they're going to go into a national show, right? And they're going to fucking destroy everybody in the national show. And they're going to be the big rising star, the number one fucking guy in bodybuilding because this guy came out of fucking nowhere and blew everybody away in the fucking local and national level. And now he's a pro. 
And this guy has not just a workout because he doesn't know any better. He's been training with Dorian for this whole time. Again, this is just an example. Could be any old school trainer that puts the person through the paces, but we're just using Dory as an example. And now he's in the pros. And he's still training that the only way he knows how. Training hard, sleeping, doing the fucking the diet, the, the you know, suffering on the diet, only eating the bro foods. This guy's doing his cardio. He's pushing himself to the max. He makes his way to his fucking first pro show and he fucking wins that pro show. Why? Because he looks better than everybody else. He's out doing everything about that they're doing. Next thing you know, he's in the fucking Olympia in his first year. And this motherfucker is battling for that top two or three or four spots in the Olympia, his first try, because he's outworking all those motherfuckers that are even more genetically elite than him. That's what's going to happen. It's going to come full circle. And then what happens is just like Dorian, the Dorian changed everything when he did exactly what I'm talking about now. When that superstar comes out, or that individual comes out and becomes a superstar very quickly, because they're out training and out dieting everyone, right? The next thing people are going to do is they're going to go, oh, well, he's just taking more drugs. They're going to push the drugs. It's not going to happen right? Their physiques are not going to get better. They're going to get worse. And eventually you're going to hear this individual talk about how he trains, how he diets, what he sacrifices in his life. And when people hear that, they're going to go, oh, fuck, like that's, that's what he's doing. And that's a formula for him. And he got it from Dorian Yates. That's a winning formula. They're going to start going back to that. They're going to start training hard again. They're going to start dieting hard again. They're going to start taking less drugs. And the people that can't make it and can't do those things will start falling off because the people that kicked it up a notch are going to be beating them on stage. They're going to be getting all the fucking the contracts, all the opportunities. They're going to be rising. Their stock is going to be rising while these other motherfuckers are just sitting there stable and haven't risen at all where nothing happens for them. And the people that can't step up and train hard and diet like that are just going to fall off and they're going to do something else. Because let's face facts, right now it's 2020. Five years ago in 2015, half the people that were training and dieting and acting like they were fucking going to be Mr. Olympia are gone. They don't even compete anymore. They don't even fucking lift anymore, some of them. Some of them have transitioned to like CrossFit and other things like health, but a lot of those people that couldn't fucking keep up, they just fucking bounced out. The same thing's going to fucking happen. The people that can't step it up a notch are going to bounce the fuck out, and then you're going to have a whole new breed of bodybuilders. Remember, everything moves in cycles, right? It's going to get fucking worse before it gets better, but eventually that one person that comes out that reaches the goal that all those other people are chasing and they can't figure out how the fuck he did it because they think he's got some kind of special stack or secret drug or whatever and eventually they're going to have to fucking boil it down to okay, he's training like this. This is what he's doing. He's eating like this. Fuck. Dorian's telling him to do this. Ronnie used to do that. Jay used to do Fuck, wait a minute. All these guys that were really awesome used to do that. What the fuck? I'm, I'm going to give it a try. And they try it a little bit and their body improves and they're like, oh, fuck, this actually worked. The people that that motivates and in It'll motivate them to push even harder. They'll get even better. And we're going to see a shift. Just like we saw the shift going towards shit and people taking more drugs and not dieting hard and not training hard, it's going to shift back the other way. It can't keep going in that direction. I mean, you're not going to have a 400-pound fat guy standing on the stage of the Olympia with his trunks hanging, I mean, his gut hanging over his trunks and his love handles hanging over his trunks and be like, here's your Mr. Olympia. You can't. It's got to go back in the other direction. So in order for somebody to step up and take that spot, it's not going to be taking more drugs. These guys are loading themselves nowadays. It's going to be somebody who trains harder and somebody who diets harder that winds up beating these guys that are loaded on the drugs, even though they're genetically superior. Dorian did the same fucking thing. There were people like Flex Wheeler that was genetically superior to him, but Dorian out-trained and out-dieted him. That's how he did it, right? Fucking Ronnie Coleman out-trained and out-dieted everybody. That's what he did. Sitting in a cop car with a fucking napkin bib on eating fucking chicken out of, the, out of a fucking Tupperware container doing cardio twice a day while only sleeps three hours a night, winning Olympias, getting in the gym and squatting 700 pounds and then lifting 700 pounds twice a week while he's doing all that other shit. Nobody was doing that. He outworked them. Simple. That's all it was. So eventually, I think people were going to get it in their head and be like, look, we thought it was the fucking drugs. We tried that. A whole generation of people looked like fucking shit. Now, this one guy who didn't really know any better, who linked up with an old school bodybuilder, is now killing everybody and it's going to shift in that direction. The whole thing is going to shift in that direction and we'll, I think we'll see it go back towards people actually training hard and dieting hard. And it's going to take a long time and a lot of education, like what Nick's talking about. Like, you know, you're teaching the kids the wrong thing. It's going to fuck it up. It absolutely is. But it's only going to go so far before it hits critical mass and it has to go back in the other direction. Now, what it does to those kids and those people now that Tony's influencing, who the fuck knows? We know for a fact that steroids do wear and tear on your fucking body. I don't give a shit what anyone says. If you're having to take something for your blood pressure, something for this, something for that, hey, guess what? You wouldn't have to take any of that shit if you stopped taking the steroids and stopped fucking around with these dumb foods, right? So it's definitely doing damage, and then they take other drugs to counteract shit that the other drugs are doing, and they say, oh, I'm healthy because I had good blood work. Anybody can clean out their blood work and fucking look good after fucking doing things for two or three weeks. Anybody. You can go off shit for a month, and your blood work will be good. doesn't mean that the damage to your fucking body, like you can't see the damage to your body. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a whole fucking, 
you know, group of kids, a whole fucking generation of kids that are going to ruin their fucking bodies early. Look at Boston Lloyd. He's got thyroid problems already. He's like 24 years old from fucking with this shit. So it's like their things are going to happen. And they're going to have to learn their lessons and people are going to step away when they're getting fucked up. And again, it's going to give room for those old school bodybuilders to come and say, hey, we used to take a little bit of test. We took a little bit of Anivar, but we trained like this. You know, I only ate fucking salad and chicken for fucking 10 weeks. Try that and see what happens. And there's going to be some motherfucker out there that can do it and he's going to be successful at it. And that's going to change the whole fucking tide. Just like we got people now, you know, out there going, well, it's all about the drugs. Well, the drugs are fairly new to a lot of people, right? But the way I see it, when I first started talking about drugs years ago, it was really new back then. Now we know there's no secret stack. I mean, Tony Huge, for example, we can use it again. This is not a knock on Tony, but his physique hasn't really improved that much. So as much shit as he does, as much as he pushes the envelope, as much damage as he's doing, as much sacrifice as he's making, his physique is not really improving very much, right? Why do you think that is? Because the training techniques that are improving, the diet gets slacked off on a lot, and they try to make up for it with drugs. And he's not consistent. He's flying all over the world doing shit, and he might be consistent with his shots, his injections and shit, but he's not consistent with food. He's not consistent with the training, which is why he has these, these phases where he gets a little bit fatter and wants to drop down and has these issues, right? Consistency. Like, it's just not there. So in my closing statements here, my closing arguments, I've been watching too much fucking SVU. Um, I do agree with Nick. Um, I do agree with what Tony does. I think that, uh, that the information needs to go out there, but I need, think it needs to be directed in the right way. Like, listen, guys, here's the deal. If you're not training your ass off already, you're not eating right, like, there's no reason to take this shit. Because I'm sorry, and, and as bad as this is going to sound, it's the truth. I've seen people that are natural that are better than fucking Tony Huge. My friend Jody Ramis, which I talked about him, he's the one who ate the chicken breast at the bar. He had chicken breast in one pocket in a bag, he had rice in the other pocket. He was the most consistent motherfucker I've ever seen. And it's funny because people on here knew who I was talking about. And they emailed me, like, is that Jody Ramis? I'm like, yeah, that's Jody Ramis I'm talking about. Jody would smoke fucking Tony any day of the week. And Jody wouldn't even have to diet because he's so fucking consistent. He's natural. So what does that say about Tony's theory that it's all about the drugs. You could take all the drugs in the world and be fucking living that baller lifestyle and you just fucking come up against Jody and it's a brick wall. You can't fucking beat him. You don't look better than him. People go, who looks better? Him over him. They're going to pick Jody every time. He was fucking that good because he was consistent and he didn't rely on drugs. So my thing is, if what Tony was saying was true, he should easily look like Ronnie Coleman right now because he takes more shit than anybody I've ever known and he has more knowledge. However, he's not producing the physique. It's kind of like Ben Pekulski. Oh, it's about the science of science. And Ben Pekulski can't produce a physique that will beat Branch Warren, who's a fucking bro and knows nothing about science. Branch goes in the gym and throws weights around and fucking kicks his ass on stage. It was the consistency. It was the fucking intensity. It was the drive. It wasn't the knowledge. People seem to think it's the knowledge. Once you have the knowledge, you have to put that shit in action. You can't have the knowledge and think you're going to outsmart everybody in bodybuilding. Because someone's going to come along and out-fucking-work you, and you're going to get beat, and you're going to look worse. That's all there is to it. Someone's going to come by and outwork you, and you're going to lose your opportunities. You're not going to do well at your shows because you're resting on your laurels that you know more than them. Great. You know more than them. You know who knew more than all these people? Dan Duchesne. And the motherfucker never looked like a bodybuilder no matter what he took because he would take the drugs and he wouldn't fucking eat right and he wouldn't train right and he was still fucking 170 pounds or whatever the fuck he was. But he took every drug under the fucking sun. So if that was true that those drugs are what does the work, why the fuck wasn't Dan Duchesne looking like fucking Ronnie Coleman or Dorian Yates? Because it's not about the drugs, guys. It's just not. So hopefully you guys will heed this warning that what Tony does is important because it's needed. People need to know about drugs, plain and simple. I don't think it should be a secret. I also don't think that drugs should be in the hands of people that are not qualified to fucking use them. If you're out there fucking, you're a slacker in life to begin with, you shouldn't be near anywhere near fucking steroids. If you're out there working fucking hard, busting your ass at your fucking job, and you haven't missed a fucking training session in four years, and you're fucking eating chicken and shit out of a fucking, not chicken and shit, but chicken and salad or fucking chicken and rice out of a Tupperware container, and you're walking around with your cooler... That's somebody that should introduce steroids if they wanted to, to their program, if they wanted to progress further and be a better competitor, right? But these motherfuckers that they don't plan anything out, they fucking do muscle confusion in the gym and they fucking push pull legs and they fucking take 20 minutes between sets and doing selfies and shit with their phone, all this bullshit, they're the last ones that should be fucking with steroids and that's just my opinion. Bossytrain at gmail.com, leave comments down below, but don't fight. Bossytrain.com is a blog, it's just my opinion, bicep, and we are out.